Hey, you want to learn something useful? Come on, let's go. Hi, this is Chris at My Handyman, and I want to teach you all those little jobs and chores that you need to do around the house that I know that you can do without calling for help. Now, we've been doing some drywalling, and I have gotten some questions on what kind of tools do we actually need to do a drywall job. And they say, gee, Chris, you got all this stuff. Why don't you describe what you have? All right, let's start out with the pan. I use a metal pan. This is a 12 inch pan, 12 inches, stainless steel. And when I pick it up, I look down the edge, this edge, and then this edge when I go to buy it. I take care of this pan because I don't want these edges to bend. If you bend them, then you can't get a good scraping off of your knife. I use stainless steel because it cleans up very nicely. Now, you can get the plastic ones, but make sure that you've got a, some sort of a metal edge on here on your plastic ones and do the same thing. Look straight down. Oh, yep, 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 that's nice and straight. No nicks or dings in it or anything like that. And then I was asked, what are these things? What are these things? You've got something on both sides of that. Well, when you're doing some drywalling and you're holding onto this pan for a long period of time, your hand sends, tends to sweat. If your hand sweats, it's going to get slippery and you're not going to get a good grip on it because, as you can tell, it's not a square. Okay? So your, your hands are going to kind of go like this. So what I use is 3M's Safety Walk. And what it is, it's a roll of adhesive tape essentially you basically you cut this off you take off the adhesive uh, strip on the back the paper on the back and you set it on your stairs so when you're going up the stairs or down a sidewalk or whatever you don't slip and fall okay it helps you prevent you from slipping so what I did was is I cut off a piece of that and I put it on the sides see I, on the either end I rounded it off just to make it look a little nicer and that works out very well. It keeps my hand from slipping. And when I wash the pan, it doesn't get underneath the adhesive on here and it doesn't start make it start to curl up. So that's good. So now when I grab this, I got a nice, good, solid grip on there. Let's talk about knives. Now the knives that I use this is my four inch all purpose knife. I use this one for almost everything. Everything from um, um, putting on a first coat of drywall or drywall mud or um, um, covering screws and, and holes with the, uh, with the drywall mud as well. It's nice and small, it's compact, it's easy to use, it's very rigid. I like that. That's my go-to knife for a lot of stuff. The second knife that I've got for feathering out the mud on your project is the six inch knife. Make sure the six inch knife is shiny, okay? If you get the ones that are not shiny, almost a bluish color, I find that they tend to rust. I like these here, they're kind of stainless steel or got a stainless steel coating on them, which I prefer much better. This particular knife has also got a metal end on it, so if I've got a nail hole that's sticking out just a little bit, the paper sticking out, I push it in just a little bit and give it a twist. It indents it nice so the mud goes over nice and solid. The next knife that I use is my 8 inch. Again, nice and shiny. 8 inches wide. I can go ahead and feather it out very nicely. It's got good control on it. I like that. My next one. My 10 inch knife. I use this especially when I'm feathering up large areas so I can get this, so I can get a nice, smooth, consistent look to it. Now, when I chose these particular knives, I did the same thing as I did with the pan. I took my six inch knife and I looked straight down to make sure that it was straight and didn't have any ridges in it. You don't want any little dings or anything, you want it perfectly flat. I did the same thing with the 8 inch knife. I look straight down the edge, make sure that it's nice, make sure there's no ridges in here. I did the same thing with my 10 inch knife. 
look straight down the edge, make sure that it's nice and straight, make sure there's no dings or anything in this. I like the shiny, cleans up nice. When you wash your knives, make them look, try to make them look new because if you leave any kind of drywall mud on there, they will pit and you don't want that. The next knife is kind of unusual looking, but I use this quite a bit when I'm, when I'm drywalling insides of rooms and I'm getting into an inside corner where your pieces go together on the inside. And I use this, okay? This particular thing, all right? So what I'll do is I'll put the drywall mud on both sides of the walls. I'll take this all the way to the top and string it all the way down. And it gives me a very nice line that goes all the way down. This takes a little bit of practice but it's really nice to have. My last knife that I use is the one I use almost all the time because when I buy mud, I buy it in a five gallon bucket. Now, a five gallon bucket runs about $15. You're probably gonna use something in the one gallon bucket area and it's gonna run five to $6. A five gallon bucket will use a knife that looks kind of like this because the bucket is round and this is contoured for a five gallon bucket. So you're gonna pull out some of the mud, scrape it right up the side and it's gonna clean the side of the bucket nice. Because if you leave stuff on the inside of the bucket, that little stuff on the inside, that tends to dry first, drop down into the good mud and then what happens? When you try to use good mud, you're gonna leave lines. You're gonna let, and it looks like, oh, I got a stone in there and it's leaving a line. It's because you didn't clean out the, the mud the right way. So those are, the, those, those are the knives that I use. That's the pan that I use. Uh, generally, I've got two of everything just in case someone wants to come around and, and help me or I do enjoy teaching people how to do things. So I will supply the tools for them so they can go ahead and learn from me. I enjoy doing that. I enjoy teaching very much. Um, please subscribe to this channel and uh, share it if you want, you know, whatever you want to do. Look at my other videos. Um, but don't tell anybody, don't, don't, don't let anybody tell you you can't do it. You can do it. If they can do it, you can do it. Just have them show you how. And then practice. Practice, practice, practice. Once you get it down, once you feel comfortable with it, the job ends up being kind of fun. And it won't be such a, oh, drudge, oh, I'd rather pay somebody to do it, which can be expensive. Thank you very much. I'll see you in the next video.